wheat flour contains around 75% of carbohydrates and between 7 to 14% of protein. There are proteins in flour called glutenin and gliadin. When dry, they are coiled tightly and are separated from each other. When flour is mixed with water, these proteins unravel and then join by bonds, making long mesh-like stretchy chains of gluten. Kneading and mixing also create these bonds and so form gluten chains. These gluten chains join up to form an elastic network like a spider web and can trap air like a balloon. The higher the protein content of flour, the more gluten that can be formed. Therefore, strong flour is required for bread. Low protein content flour is needed for cakes. Yeast is used in bread making as it creates carbon dioxide gas. And chemical raising agents such as baking powders are used in cake making to also produce gas. Bread flour has a higher protein content, around 12 to 14 percent. This is compared to plain flour, also known as all-purpose flour, which is around 10 to 12 percent. There is also cake flour, which is around 7 to 8 percent and has the lowest protein content. The more protein means the more gluten that can be made, resulting in a stronger and more elastic dough. Kneading dough helps to make and stretch gluten strands. As a result, they become longer, align and create a strong elastic gluten network capable of trapping gases. Under kneading results in an underdeveloped gluten network, leading to dough that may not hold its shape well and produces dense, crumbly baked goods. Over kneading, particularly in a machine, can cause the gluten to become too tight and does not stretch easily, resulting in a tough, rubbery texture, especially in bread dough. Allowing bread dough to rest before kneading or shaping allows the flour to absorb more water and so gluten starts forming naturally. Resting the dough also allows the gluten to relax, loosen and unwind, therefore reducing the, the elasticity and making it easier to shape. Pastry dough is often put into the fridge to rest for around 30 minutes. This helps the gluten to relax, the butter to firm up and the pastry to chill, which makes it easier to roll out. Cool and relaxed pastry is more likely to hold its shape when cooking and so prevents pastry shrinking in the oven. Fat, such as butter, oil or shortening, interferes with gluten formation by coating the flour particles with fat. This prevents water from reaching the gluten proteins. The fats and oils also break down the gluten into shorter strands, hence the term shortening. Recipes with a high fat content, like pastries or cakes, have tender flaky textures, so less gluten development. Laminate doughs, like puff pastry, use fat to prevent gluten formation in certain layers. This results in the desired flakiness. Sugar competes with gluten proteins for water in the dough as they both absorb water. In sweet doughs used to make cakes, sugar absorbs water so there is less for the gluten proteins. This slows down gluten development and so leads to a tender cake. A tender cake is characterised by a fine crumb, lightness and a melt-in-your-mouth feel without being dense or tough. The acidity of a dough mixture affects the gluten formation. Ingredients like yoghurt, lemon juice or vinegar 
can weaken gluten development because acidic conditions cause gluten proteins to denature, to unfold. This leads to a softer, less elastic dough. This is useful in certain pastries or cakes where tenderness is desired. Cake tenderness refers to the soft, moist and delicate texture of a cake that makes it pleasant to bite into. Salt strengthens gluten formation in bread dough by tightening the gluten protein structure. It helps control the rate of fermentation, the amount of carbon dioxide that's produced, and improves dough elasticity and structure. Without salt, the bread dough may become slack and sticky, making it difficult to handle and shape, and it may produce bread with a flat texture. In recipes using baking powder or bicarbonate of soda, little gluten development is needed as cakes require a light and fluffy texture. However, gluten is important for providing some stability and structure for cakes. Pastry dough is only mixed until all the ingredients are combined, resulting in less gluten development. However, if there is too little gluten in the pastry dough, it will fall apart easily.